Hello, Magnum Man 2010, back again. I wanted to do an update on that antenna power video I did. A few things I'd like to point out. So here it is here at circuit. On the last video, on the antenna power video, uh, I had that on a breadboard. And I built these circuits now. I built three of them. They're the same thing. I wanted to do some experiment around it with them. And I made some made some changes. Uh, uh, on the last one, I had to charge a super cap uh, to run this uh, little uh, jewel thief here. If you, if you recall, if you if you've seen that video, and uh, it, it ran it just fine. But the only problem that I found out is that super cap had to charge for a week or two before it had enough power in it to run that uh, little jewel thief, light up that LED. So I've made some changes since then, and what you're seeing now is you're seeing the, uh, that's a penny circuit, it's a lead, lead motor penny. The only difference is uh, I've got a couple of inductors here instead of that green twist wire coils that he used. They seem to work pretty good, but you can see the LEDs there, let me zoom in on them. You can see them flashing away there, and uh, they're working just great. They are hooked uh, right up here. It goes to the antenna. This one down here goes to the ground. And the other ones, uh, two of them go to a... Uh, they, they just go down to the circuit down below there, the other two. Okay. That's working That's working great. No, uh, no super cap, no nothing. It's directly right off the antenna and off the uh, ground rod that's in the ground. There's no way in the world they're hooked to the household power. The completely uh, air power I'm getting there. Now I made some changes, and and probably the most important one. I'll have to move this over a little bit so you can see it right here. Okay, I want to zoom in on that a little. That's a coil off a crystal set I made quite a long time ago, and uh, what I did with it is I hooked it uh, across the antenna in the ground. And maybe I can show you on here. I have a little drawing of my hold it steady enough right there. That, the, the bottom of the coil goes to a ground rod, and the top simply goes to the antenna. And what I, what I did is I did a little experimenting around with it, and I found uh, from going from tap to tap, it's got five taps on it there, from going from tap to tap, I found out if I go to the second one from the bottom there, it more than doubled the power coming in. And with the aid of that, I was able to run this little uh, blocking oscillator steady all day long. It keeps flashing away. So I thought that was a pretty uh, substantial improvement. And that coil over there, that little crystal set coil, made all the difference in the world. Now there's something else here I need to point out to you. A very interesting thing I found out here. Here you can see another one I made. It's right here. And I have the output of it, uh, well, this is the ground right here. This lead here goes to the ground, that ground rod outside. And this this is a indoor antenna I got rigged up. Uh, and I have it hooked up to a meter right here, so the output of it to a meter. Okay, now if you follow that up, that just goes to a shelf up there. And then it swings over and goes to a, one of them clamp-on lights. And that, uh, I'll turn that off a second so you can uh, see the light better. There, there it is. I just looked at the uh, antenna, the little indoor antenna I rigged up there, and I clipped it to the reflector, the aluminum reflector on that light. That aluminum reflector is not fastened uh, metal to metal anywhere. It's just mounted on the plastic part of the uh, light socket. So you know that. Okay, I'm going to turn that uh, light back on. Go back down here again. Take me a minute to get adjusted. Okay. Now, the output from that is going to this guy right here. Now, I was playing around with that, and I really couldn't get anything out of it. Uh, I'm going to turn the light off. Okay. Turn the meter on. 
and we are getting what all of a sudden 183 milliamps not enough to light up anything really well now it's going up 203 I have some energy stored in them caps right here there's uh, two caps right there 100 UF caps I short that out and they'll go away <laughs> well anyway what I wanted to show you let that settle out I'll show you what it's going to do just off the antenna. Okay. For some reason it's climbing and I've never, never done that before. I don't know why. Well, anyway, what I wanted to point out is let's see if, if I turn this light on. There, it's settled out now. Just about. 193 milliamps. That's what I'm getting off that antenna. I just that little wire that's running up there that shelf and clipped onto that light. Okay. Well, I was mess messing around here and for some reason I decided to turn that light on and this is what happened. There she goes. I gotta switch that up to 20 volts. I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit. Well, what I found out was obviously I'm getting a lot of radiation off that uh, light up there. So what I did is I unscrewed the CFL and I put in a regular 110 volt incandescent light bulb and the power did not go up. It stayed around 180 uh, millivolts. Didn't go up at all. So I screwed that incandescent out and I put one of these uh, LED lights, 110 volt LED light. I stuck that in there and turned it on and the power did not go up at all. It stayed right down there at the bottom. Kind of puzzling, I thought. Well, with no light bulb screwed in at all, it didn't do anything at all. So then I screwed the CFL back in and away it went. <laughs> it charged right back up there again. So, so the CFL is obviously radiating quite a bit of energy, I found out. So I, I've seen some videos on TV where guys were stretching uh, indoor antenna and they're kind of running from light fixture to light fixture to hold them up. And if there's CFLs in them light fixtures, let me assure you they're getting a pulse reading. They're getting the radiation off the CFL. <laughs> I found that out by accident. That's pretty neat to find out, I thought. Okay. I uh, hooked uh, I'm afraid I'll burn it out if I hook it up now. I hooked a LED to it, not knowing what was going on at the time, and it blew it right out. <laughs> I'll take this little jewel thief here and hook it up to it once. I shorted it out the caps out so it went back down to zero but I have I have it hooked up to it now let me let me let it charge up a little bit more It'll take a while otherwise get it up to three four volts I don't know uh, hang on I'm just gonna use a, a regular LED here Got it right here. I'm gonna hook it up. Can give it up where you can see it. And it. it uh, if you let it get too high and you touch the LED, it'll burn it right out. So you're getting quite a bit of power off of that. The other thing I did one when I was messing around with it, just for the heck of it, once I found out that that CFL was radiating so much energy. I turned on the uh, Exciter Slayer over here, this guy, and it just skyrocketed in. So these air circuits, uh, they're really good for picking up stray electricity, not necessarily from your antenna. <laughs> but this one over here, 
This is definitely from the antenna. There's no question about it. Well, anyway, I thought that was pretty interesting, so I thought I'd share it with all you guys out there. I'm still having a heck of a good time here, and I sure hope you are, too. See my little lights flashing away there? I'm pretty happy about that. Finally got the air power to work all the time. Let me get this hold steady. There she is. You can see her pretty good now. It just flashes away steady. Well, that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching.